Verhelox all. I am Skeggy Vetter, and welcome to the Norse Code. Now we are deep into spooky season with Halloween just a couple days away, and as we approach the blessed holiday of Samhain, I thought it's time for us to get a little spooky here at the Norse Code. That's why tonight we are going to talk about the Viking undead, the Draugr. Now, what you need to know is what is a Draugr? How do you become a Draugr? How can you prevent a Draugr? And most importantly, how do you kill a Draugr? And all of these are questions we're gonna to answer tonight. So first, what is a Draugr? Well, as I mentioned, it is the Viking undead, meaning that it is a being that has died and then come back, much like a vampire or a zombie or a revenant. It is not a ghost. It is not a spirit. And that's something completely different. And we could cover that another time, probably with a little crossover between the Norse code and my other side of my life, which is empty casket and get haunted uh, to paranormal organizations that I am involved in. But no, tonight is all about the Draugr, the physical reanimation of a deceased person. Now, there are there's a, another uh, creature within Norse mythology uh, that is the the Hauger. Now, the Hauger is specifically a barrow dweller or a mound dweller uh, and depending on which story you're reading uh, the the Hauger and the Draugr can sometimes be used interchangeably so since we don't have a really good definition of what a Draugr is like th there's nothing in the sources that say this is a Draugr this is what it is these are the rules that it it abides by. Instead, what we have are stories that involve the Draugr. And those stories are, that, that's it, that's all we got. And we just have to gleam from those stories what a Draugr is. Uh, the most famous of those stories is in the saga of Grettir, which is a 13th century Icelandic saga. We'll talk more about that later because I have something special planned for that one. But no, so the Draugr. So what the Draugr is, it's a reanimated thing, a person. Uh, most often, the Draugr is associated with burial mounds. It is a deceased person who has come back to life to protect what he has buried in his burial mound. So whether that be treasure or something really important, um, th this does kind of stem in with the modern idea of a ghost, which is that there's some sort of uh, unfinished business. So <clears throat> oftentimes these uh, Draugr, they're there to dissuade the robbery of burial mounds, which was actually quite common not only through the Viking era, but after the Viking era, and in some ways still is, although nowadays we just call it archaeology. Uh, so the, the Draugr would come back to life and protect what they have. Uh, the most recent example I could think of in which you can actually see this would be the film from two years ago, The Norsemen, or The Northmen. Uh, is that has a actual fight scene between the protagonist and a Draugr when he's looking for the sword. Now, I think that leads directly into how does one become the Draugr? Well, there's no set list of rules of what you need to do to become a Draugr. Uh, however, generally it's looked at as the Draugr, it stems from greed. So uh, greed, a, a desire to keep your material possessions, 
that all works towards allowing you to become a Draugr after death. And it's not just like a little greed, it's like big time major greed. Uh, there is one other way to become a Draugr, and this we see a few times throughout the stories, and that is to be bitten or attacked by a Draugr. Uh, very much like our modern zombie tales, the Draugr can bite you, kill you, which, which you will then come back as a Draugr. However, that Draugr is a little bit different. That's not the mound dweller, that's not the Draugr that's out there to protect its fortunes. It is quite literally what we call a zombie today. Something that came back, it's bloodthirsty, and it's just looking to kill and eat and feed and kill and eat and feed and kill. So those are the two types of Draugr and kind of how you become them. Uh, unfortunately, there's just not any more information as to how you become a Draugr. And I think we're all pretty familiar with, with zombies that we don't need to go into too much, um, too much uh, details as to what the zombies can do. Uh, so the way people would see or, or be able to tell if somebody was going to become a, a Draugr would be, well, one, they see the bite marks from being attacked by a Draugr. Or if you were to die sitting up or prone, and you, like you're not laying down, then that would uh, be a sign that, that, that you might be turning into a Draugr, in which case there was a whole mess of things that Vikings would do to try to prevent you from becoming a Draugr. So one of the precautions uh, would be to put straw or twigs under the burial shroud. I don't know why. I, I've, I've looked, I've not been able to find any sources that's to say why that works. Uh, but we just know that's something that people would do to, to stop people from turning into Draugrs. Another thing would be to put a pair of scissors on your chest. Again, I'm not, I haven't been able to find any reason why they do that. We just know from archaeological evidence that people would put scissors on the, the chest of a buried loved one to ensure that they don't come back as a Draugr. Uh, another one which is actually kind of interesting is that as they're carrying the coffin to the cemetery, they would lift it and lower it several times in different directions. This one, we know what they were trying to do is confuse the Draugr's sense of direction so that if it tried to come back, it, instead of coming back to the home that it knew, it would just kind of get lost and wander off because it didn't know where it was going. And then the most interesting of all of the ways that they would try to prevent a Draugr is quite simply when you were leaving the house, and this isn't so much prevention as to prevent the Draugr from attacking, coming back to the home and attacking the family, but they would take the, the body out of the house through the corpse door. Now I'm sure you're wondering what the hell is a corpse door and why do homes have a door just for corpses? Well what they would do is they'd actually break a hole in the side of the wall, take the corpse out through it, and then repair it, repair the wall. That was the corpse door. The thought was that the Draugr could only re-enter the house the way that it left. So if it left through the wall and then you you know, close up the wall, it can't come back into the house. So they didn't want it to leave out the door or out a window or something. Which is kind of a fascinating idea. Why they, they would think that, I'm not sure. But, the, you know, if you were that scared of a Draugr that you would break a hole in the side of your wall to get the body out when you could just as easily walk through the door, I, I don't know, I just find that really, really fascinating. Uh, and then, the most important piece of information is how do you kill a Draugr? Cut off its head. Just like a zombie, or a vampire, or any of the other undead that you find throughout the, the old world, 
what do you do? Cut off their head. Oh, I can't believe I forgot uh, two of the ways that people would prevent Draugrus from coming out of the grave. One way is they would tie their big toes together, so if they did get out of the grave, they can't actually walk or run or anything, giving you a better chance to either run away or decapitate said Draugr. Or they would stick nails and pins in the bottom of the feet of the corpse so that they can't walk. You know, it starts, as soon as they try to walk, they either get stuck in something or it starts damaging the foot and you're not able to move, which I don't know how effective that would be because I've seen a lot of zombie movies and they move around pretty well as long as they're still undead. But that's what people would do. Now, there's at least one story out there that gives the Draugr some uh, magical properties. Uh, most of the stories, they don't have any kind of magical abilities. Uh, however, th there are a few that's mentioned out there, and so we need to mention them here. One of them is shape-shifting, that the Draugrs can kind of change their, their shape um, and try to disguise themselves or, or to better enter or exit an area. And then uh, the other is that the Draugr has the ability to enter your dreams and can actually attack you through your dreams. Very Freddy Krueger-esque. In fact, that's actually very, very Freddy Krueger-esque. Because technically, Freddy Krueger is an undead because he died and then came back and he's attacking people through their dreams. I did not put that together when I was preparing for this episode. Interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, so as we said, just to kind of reiterate, we have the Draugr, which are the undead of the Viking world. And, and these were, you know, very common in the stories, not just during the Viking Age, but post-Viking Age, well into the realm of uh, Christianity. Uh, and, and, and predominant, they're seen throughout, but very much a lot of the stories come from Iceland. But you still see this, uh, the stories in Denmark and Sweden and Norway. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the thought of the Draugr just does not seem to go away. And it's something that people were actually very, very afraid of. And rightfully so. I mean, the undead is something that frightens people through, you have uh, zombies. Uh, which actually traced their origin back to Africa uh, and then they, the African slaves actually brought that to the New World in, through, the, through voodoo, uh, hoodoo and voodoo. Um, and you have the vampires in Eastern Europe and you know all of them, they're, they're absolutely terrified of these undead creatures and so were the Vikings. And it, it makes you think that maybe there's some stem of truth in this because they all kind of act the same way. They're all killed the same way, decapitation. Some of the manners of keeping them in the grave are the same, whereas the Vikings are tying their toes together and putting scissors on their chest. In Eastern Europe with the vampires, they would actually put a stake through you, not to damage your heart like they show you in the movies, but to actually physically pin you to the location so you couldn't get back up. Uh, but yeah, so those are our Draugrs. So if you see any Draugrs, make sure you decapitate them. Um, try not to get bit by one because you don't want to come back as a bloodthirsty Viking zombie. Well, unless you want to become a bloodthirsty Viking zombie, in which case, go find yourself a Draugr. Uh, if you go out to Scandinavia, no grave robbing. Yeah, there might be a Draugr in there and you might want to see it, but We've grown past that. We don't do that anymore. If you want to rob graves, become an archaeologist. Because then it's legal. Oh, I'm sorry. I did mention the saga of Gretter. Uh, so I will be releasing on Halloween night a reading, a, a snippet of the saga in which Gretter battles the uh, Draugr uh, Grimmer. Glam oh, I'm sorry. Glamour. Battles Glamour, the Draugr. Now this Draugr is the bloodthirsty type. He actually went out on Yule, got killed by a Draugr, 
came back and just started wreaking havoc. Uh, so I will be not reading directly from the saga, but reading a anglicized version of it, which is a little bit more entertaining uh, to listen to. So I will be recording that and releasing that on Halloween night. It's a nice little Halloween story for everybody. So I know this episode's a little bit shorter. Uh, you know, we're only covering the Draugr, and there's really not a lot of information out there on the Draugr. But, interesting nonetheless, and ties in with spooky season. So, thank you very much for joining us tonight. <clears throat> and until next time, Hail si thok uk hugen gotem, Thor thik thegi odin thik egi. Hail to you and be, being good spirits. May Thor protect you and may Odin keep you. Good night, my friends.